Welcome to Get Better Basketball Live. I'm Coach DeMarco, and today my guest is Coach Austin Hurley, head coach for Parker Boys Basketball. Coach Hurley is going to take us through his motion offenses against the zone defense. You're not going to want to miss this episode. But before I jump into it, make sure you hit that like button down below, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to the Get Better Basketball YouTube channel for more great video breakdowns each and every week. Another episode of Get Better Basketball Live is up now. Coach DeMarco here with Get Better Basketball Live, and today my guest is Coach Austin Hurley, who's joining me once again. And today we're going to talk using a motion offense against zone defense. Coach, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me again. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited for this topic. I feel like um, anytime you get to talk zone offense, um, coaches are very interested, looking for different things they can use against zone defenses because that's definitely something that can kind of cause offenses to be a little more stagnant. And I want to start by asking you, um, you know, where did you learn the motion offenses that you use against zone defense? And what, what are the advantages to using these against the zone defense? So five years ago when I started with a uh, T area school district and coaching freshman basketball, that's where I learned this from uh, one of the assistant coaches who got it from a, uh, from one of his coaching buddies that was at a D two college coach. And, um, and it's kind of a unique zone offense that I haven't really seen before. And then um, it's super simple uh, to run. Um, there's a lot of decision-making involved with it. Um, and yeah, so it's been very effective. It puts our guards in really good spots to make decisions. It puts the defense at a big disadvantage, especially against a two-three zone, because um, that's one of the main goals in this offense is to put the bottom two defenders in disadvantaged spots and how and give us the advantage of of what we want to do. Now, is this something that you use against different types of zone, odd uh, and even front zones, or? Is it more effective against like a two three versus three two? Yeah, we use it um, against two three, a one two two, or three two if you want to call it that, yeah. um, and a one three one. There are some different variations when it gets to that odd front um, that you can do, um, and especially with like a one three one. The when we run that, we want to make sure that that runner on the bottom is in the most disadvantaged spot, and our and then a two side. Um, two side uh, defenders are in disadvantages and make them put decisions instead of us making decisions, they have to make a decision. And I'll go through those um, as well. I have all those sets in here. So what's the base? Um, I know we're going to take a look at this in, in just a couple minutes, but uh, what's, what's the base setup that you uh, will use in this zone offense that you run? So it's a two, one, two base zone offense. Um, you'll have, you can decide, I'll show it here in a bit, but um, basically your one and your three are in the, are on, in the slots and not on the three point line. They're back by like the volleyball lines. Um, you put your best three point shooter in the corner. You put your four at the high post and then your five is on the, is on, down on the block opposite of your shooter, your corner player. So that's going to be our base alignment with that. I like that. It's, it's, you know, a little bit unique. And I also think that it's going to give defenses some fits if they're in a two, three, you know, having to kind of match up. I think, you know, I know you guys run a little bit of a dribble drive offense. So there's uh, definitely some similarities with the two guard front out there. And obviously that's effective against odd front zones as well. So why don't we jump into this here? I'm excited to uh, take a look and see the breakdown. Okay. So this is the two, one, two zone offense um, that I've been using been learning and been a part of for the last uh, five to six years. This is something I'll be implementing in my program come this winter, and then we'll be implementing this summer. Um, it's by myself, Coach Austin Hurley. My email is austin.hurley at icloud.com if you need any diagrams. And then my Twitter is at Coach Hurls. Um, if you want, you can DM me and I can send you anything that you may need. So the objective of the overview, we're going to go over the basic alignments, actions, our multiple entries versus a two-three zone and a one-two-two zone, and then how to attack versus a one-three-one zone. So we're going to get a look at three different zones with the same actions. There's just slight adjustments that 
um, are needed to be made based on the front. So here's our basic alignment that you're gonna see here. We're gonna have the one with the ball, the high slot. We're gonna have the three in the other high slot, the two in the corner, and the two and the three are interchangeable. Um, whoever your best decision makers are should be your one and your three. I usually put my most athletic guys at the one and the three and my best three point shooter in the, at, in the corner. Um, our four is gonna be at the high post and our five is gonna be opposite of the corner in the block. So as you can see against the two three zone, um, the defense that really has to make a lot of decisions here on how they're gonna defend this. So when the one has the ball, the X one is gonna cover the one obviously. We're gonna pass to the three where the X two is guarding the high post where a lot of two three zone defensive principles are we need to cover the high post and we'll let this pass happen, especially if it's a pack line defense that runs zone, that's gonna be a principle for that. So when we make this pass, the three is now gonna have the ball here in the second frame. He's gonna take two dribbles here. She's gonna take two dribbles to the right, which is gonna drag this X2 over. And then that one after it passes is gonna cut through to this opposite free throw line. Um, so what's going to happen in here, and I'll show you in the next slide, is this three is going to pass to this one. And now what we have is we have put this X3 in a disadvantage. Because now the X2 is here, the X1 had to drop to the high post. And now this X3 is in a disadvantage spot. So in the second frame, you can see if the X3 comes up to guard the one, we're going to pass to the two. The two, as you can see now, the three in the third frame has a decision if this is your best three point shooter, they're going to shoot it. And we want them to shoot the three. And then the rule here is that since the ball went to the corner, our four is going to dive. And the reason we have the four dive is because against a matchup zone, that X5 is probably coming out to guard the two or in some principles. And that X3 is going to try to X down to the block. And if that X3 is slow with that, that four is wide open. And then you have a layup. And then we have a five seal on the backside. Mm -hmm. Also with this, if the two has the ball in the corner, um, the two can also skip past to this three. And that's another open three point look. And then if that X four comes on the three, then they can dump down the five. So basically what we've done is put this X three in a bad position so that we feel comfortable and we are in control of the possession. The biggest thing I've learned in this zone offense is this what we call an X cut right here. This X cut is just the simplest wrinkle that you can throw in and it puts everyone in a disadvantage in the defense because now this X3 has to make a decision because this X2 can't bump to the X1 because it has to guard the four. And then, because if it does bump and the X1 does come up and this one leaves dribbling now the high post is now open, which we'll get into that entry too. So we get to the spot where the two gets the ball and let's say the X3 stays down and you've hit a couple threes here at the two and keeps it. Let's see. So now what we have is the X3 is down on the bottom here and the one has the ball. Now the one has a decision make, can shoot a three. If your one's a good three point shooter, you're two. It can attack the five. And if it does attack the five and the five comes stepping out, this five is gonna see all this back here and you can throw a nice lob to that five or a bounce pass. And now they're getting a layup there. So you're, give, you're putting more guys in disadvantages just with this X. Also, if they do defend it well, where this X3 does, does a stunt, they do a Syracuse bump, what have you, then we have a skip pass to this three over here. If X4 comes out, X5 slides over to say they're late, we dump it to the five, we now have uh, a post up. So then the second frame that we have here is the reversal. And this is a big component to getting a disadvantage in the opposite side. So when the one has the ball and let's say they do a Syracuse bump and they're really, it's a good team, really good at it. They've practiced it a lot. We're gonna have our four step up to the perimeter. We're gonna reverse the four, which causes X2 to come up. Now the three is gonna get the ball reversed uh, to that, to them. So in this comes with the decision making from your three is if the X4 stays down, you shoot the three or you can attack the gap. If the X4 comes up, 
then you can pass down to the five. And then with that being said, let's say it's let's say they defend it well. Usually in this offense, it's really quick. You're shooting the ball within the first 10 to 15 seconds of the shot clock if you have one. Um, and that's how I like to play is fast pace. We're going to get good looks. Um, then if it doesn't work out, let's say we don't get these looks. We usually we do. But let's say we don't, we reset it. And then we the one just comes back up, the three dribbles back up, and the four goes back to the high post and repeat it again. So that's kind of our motion part of that. Really like, so, Coach, uh, the ability to run this against different defenses, which I'm seeing how you can do that. But also um, <clears throat> thinking of teams that kind of, you know, there's some teams that even like a, a matchup zone, as you mentioned, or a switching man to man. I actually shared a video out that, that kind of uh, dribble drive, that nail cut, that brush cut that you're using in this zone offense. If teams are trying to switch in man to man, it's effective as well. So I know we're talking zone offense here, but I think, you know, you're giving coaches a really good premise here that making that cut through and then the dribble, the ball handle are going away from it. Uh, it's very tough for them to, to make a clean switch on that. And it creates a lot of problems and can obviously see that in the zone uh, offense here. And then the other thing I wanted to mention that I really like is that uh, two on one advantage you're creating against the uh, X three. Uh, we can see it here on the left hand side um, of this PowerPoint that, you know, one and two, who's X three going to go to if they go out to one, it's that pass to the corner they don't get out, it's a drive, or there's other options off of it. So um, this is a, a, a nice little zone offense, and I really like uh, the variety of options and then the ability to reset and kind of come back to it uh, again, as you mentioned there at the end. So uh, a lot of nice options here. And then, so that's kind of our strong entry, and you can call it strong. So we can also do a weak side entry with this as well. Um, so with this... The two, so I switch this. I have a new computer, so I just switch it up a little bit. So our two is at the top with the ball. Um, the one is over here in the slot, and the three is in the corner. Um, once again, your two and three can be interchangeable depending on your personnel. So this is our weak entry. So the two is going to start with the ball, pass to the one. The one's going to dribble over just like before. The two is going to do that brush cut or X cut, as we call it, to the free throw line. And then the one's going to pass there. So as you see, the X1 is staying down on that four. The X2 is now in the second frame, um, has had to dribble, come over with the one, the X3 came up. So now here is your decision making with the two, with our weak entry is, we're gonna have the five seal out this X5 down here. And now we have a possibility of a post up with no help down there. Um, the reason we can't have any help with this is because if the X1 comes, our four is going to dive to the opposite side. We have a, a dump pass right there. Um, if the four comes across, we can pass to the three. Or if it goes to the five, we can pass the one. Um, we also have a skip pass to the one over here to now put this X4 in a uh, disadvantaged spot. And then just like before, you just use your reads of if the four comes up, you pass to the three, four dives. If the X4 stays down, the one can shoot or drive. Um, I really like when they when we skip past here to the one and drive, because now the X4, if he stunts, we kick out to the three, just like in our dribble drive offense. If the X5 comes up, the three's behind, we can now get a nice lob pass into the five or a nice shot there. So that's our uh, our weak entry um, for that as well. So in this offense, um, what happens is, is teams start to cheat a lot. So when I had the when I I've had a freshman group for the last five years, and we'd go against the JV and the varsity, and that first initial couple possessions, three possessions, that X cut, that brush cut, the pass from the slot is usually there. So now with this pass, in which a lot of teams do, so what happens is is now we're gonna pass to the high post, and then we're gonna instead of doing that X cut, we're gonna now just flow down to the one to the free throw line here, the two to the below the free throw line this side, and now the four is gonna face the hoop. If the X5 stays down, they can shoot that, that mid range shot, that free throw shot, we're okay with that. Um, if the X5 comes up, this five is sealing out, we now have a pass to the five for a, for an easy layup or a quick layup. 
Um, but the five has to do a really good job of sending this guy out and doing the work early. They can't be late. They have to be strong. Um, also at this, when the four has the ball, um, we have the options of going from to the one. Now, if the X3 comes out and the X5 stayed up, like in a matchup zone style, um, and they didn't stay with, now we can dumb it down to the five and they have a layup there. Um, or the one can also skip past the two and put this X4 in a disadvantaged spot as well. Um, Pat, getting a high post touch is a big key component that we have in our offense, um, just because it t makes the, the five, that middle defender, really have to decide what they're gonna do. If they're gonna stay down protecting the rim or if they're gonna uh, come out and defend. And if you have a really good passer at your four, you gotta have a really good passer here, really good decision maker, because they're gonna, it's kind of like the Princeton offense um, or any chin action, you gotta have it at the middle. You gotta see all of the, those other players. Having that extra then, player down in the block area, coach, makes such a difference as I'm looking at this. I just, I feel like a lot of time, you know, you have your one, three, ones, you have your two, one, two, or two in the corner. Um, but having this player in this area creates a lot of problems for the defense where on this high post entry, um, I also love that one and two, um, you know, on that pass can kind of work their way to the corner. So it could be a quick, you know, high post back out. But um, just thinking about five sailing in here and the option to dump inside or before to go high, low out of it, um, they keep him in there. You know, you don't see a ton of teams do that. And I can see the advantages that you're creating by having that other player, even if it's not a true post player, just by having them down around the paint, as long as they can finish and have good hands in there, I think they're going to get some easy buckets inside. Yeah. And uh, usually what we do is um, for our five here, it doesn't have to be a true post player. You can put a four down there as well. Um, because sometimes in your offense, if you have a true post or what have you, sometimes the five in a zone offense rarely gets a touch unless in a zone defense um, really gets a touch because it's so packed in there. Um, they usually have to get it on an offense or rebound. Um, so we like to put our uh, best athletes out on the perimeter and at the four, those guys who are going to really going to score for us and then are put our best rebounder offensively in the five there. And so then when the ball is still at the high post, um, the big thing with this one and the two is that they have to get below the four so they can see. So now with this, this is obviously the X1, X2 are not going to sit up here the whole time. This, is ha this has to be pretty quick with the decision of the four to know what they're doing. Um, but Because the, the X2 might come down on the ball, X1 might come down on the ball, they might spread out. Those are just reads the four has to make. But if the four comes to the two, we're back to where we started, where the X4, and if the X3 is taking away this five and it passes the two, the X4 comes up, we go to the three, and now there's no one down here. We can shoot a three, we can try baseline, the four can dive, the three can pass that four for a layup. So that's um, a really good um, a position and disadvantage or an advantage for us that we use. That four, you know, catching, catch, square, look to score, and then that opposite out to the two and then creates options. But um, I, I just, I'm thinking about a player I, I coached that was really good from that high post area. And even when that X5 came out to them, it was a head fake, one dribble and a drive to the basket, you know, and then X4 starts staying tighter and then it's one dribble and a kick. So if you have a pretty good player, a pretty good athlete in that spot, I mean, you're going to cause fits for the defense. So um, just seeing so many things I, I like about this offense that, um, you know, if I was back uh, full-time coaching, I would definitely be thinking about this with my team. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's a great point. The, the head fake dribble, because that's a lot of, that's good dribble drive stuff too, with reading that help defender coming off there. Um, where if that X4 does stay out, let's say that let's say your corner players hit a couple threes and that X4 can't take away paint. They got to stay out. You're going to have layups. You're going to have opportunities. Um, and that's what I really like about this offense. And it's kind of unique. I haven't seen a college or any other high school teams run anything like this. So, um, so when, when we do run it and I heard from coaches, like they spend a lot of times, a lot of time trying to 
scout this and trying to run it. And it takes a lot of their practice time because they're trying to get down the, what we're doing. You sure you want me to share this video out on my YouTube channel? You know what though, as I'm watching this, uh, even if you know it, like if I'm coaching and I'm running the zone defense, I know what you're going to do. Right. And I've seen this. A lot of it's about those decisions. I mean, with every pass, you know, the ball goes into that four, they got a shot, they got a head fake drive, they got a pass opposite, they got a drive and a kick. I mean, the defense is going to react. And even if they know you're, what you're doing, I think knowing what you're doing and stopping it with this type of uh, offense against a zone is, is two completely different things because there's so many options, uh, you know, that I see out of it. Yeah, and, you know, I've had that thing too is, you know, what – like – Coach has always been like, what if they get hold of your playbook, this and that or that? I'm like, you can have someone's playbook, but you still have to beat the offense. You still have to have your players be better, try to be better than theirs. Um, you know, it's a whole different animal. I mean, yeah, share it all you want. I mean, still got to beat it. We still have to have players that have to run it correctly and they have to make good decisions. You know, it's, you know, I mean, I could take my guys and go against a, a Syracuse where you're going to lose by – 50 because they got six foot eight guys and <laughs> six ten guys and they touch fingertips from yep. when their arms are out we're, we're not going to beat them you know it's yep. one of those things you just got to have better players sometimes yep yep so then our other option is too is let's say that x5 comes up we've ran that high post coaches have made it to an adjustment at a timeout or anything like that and the x5 comes up so we're gonna do our dribble or push entry and so all we're going to do it's kind of like the high post is we're going to dribble down um and we're going to dribble down below the uh, free throw line, the four is now going to pop up. The two is going to go down as well. So basically, anytime we're doing this, the one and two are going to mirror each other. So with this X two is now coming down, the four is going to pop up, which makes this X five to stay down. And if it do, they do come up, that's perfectly fine. But we're going to reverse it. And if we don't want to reverse it, let's say the X one's here, we can also skip past the other side. Um, so we're going to reverse, reverse, and now we're back in our uh, di advantage and putting the X4 in a disadvantage of they have to come up. And now we have one on two. We have two on one. Um, we can drive at the X5. The five on this backside seals the X3. We have a lob pass there. Um, you know, we're cleaning up a rebound. Um, you know, and this is really quick. It's got to be quick reversals. It can't be a catch thing pass because then that four is going to come up and take away that it's got to be a boom 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 get it around that's why i like the skip pass a little bit better out of this because even that four coming up this five is going to tell the x1 hey four is coming up and then we're going to skip to that two they're going to have a wide open three or if that four bumps up we pass the three they're going to have a wide open three so there's just a lot of advantages out of out of this uh, offense and how we put those bottom guys in disadvantaged spots just looking at this coach, um, that four player, like I said, I had a couple of players I, I coached that I feel like would be a great fit for that spot as taller, not quite post. I mean, we kind of had four or five players that we like to shoot three pointers, um, you know, similar to what we see with a lot of teams out there. But um, I also feel like you, you could put your point guard in that spot. You could put in your best decision maker. Thinking uh, Virginia did a little bit of that this year um against a, a, a zone um they you know had their point guard uh you know in the middle so um and, and some other teams as well out there that will, will do that so do you do you um do you do that at all with that that four player is it is it always your post type player or I know you said you have kind of a, a undersized team a little bit this year so um maybe maybe it's naturally one of those types of players so um with our team right now just thinking about personnel and who I'd who I'd put there if I had to play this week or whatever. Um, so we have three, we have two guys that are six, two, very athletic, very good. Um, and what I would do is the guy that play my five would actually play in this four spot. Um, he's six, two, he can take guys off the dribble. He's very strong. He's a good passer, a good decision maker. Um, the other guy that six, two, I'm probably putting him in the corner. He can hit corner threes. So my four and five aren't actually going to be the four and five spot. My five will be the four. My four will be the three. And then actually my three is going to be my five. He's six foot. He is, he is built strong. He's a farm kid. And 
he's probably going to be down there. And then I'm going to put my point guard and my best, my other uh, better player at the top. And that's kind of how we're going to go about that. Because to be honest, a lot of the times that five in this offense uh, doesn't touch the ball very much, especially in zone offenses. Uh, you rarely see a uh, guy fives get a ball, uh, a ball touch unless it's a lob for a dunk or there's a set play for an alley-oop or anything like that. So that's kind of the tough part about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and to be honest with coaching and you, I mean, all coaches make their best decisions, you know, they'll use, they'll put the best guys in the way they fit in the best place. So, so this is against a one, two, two. Um, we're doing the exact same thing here. Um, we're going to pass uh, to the two. The one's going to do that brush cut dribble over, which is going to drag that X one that's the top. Now what this does, it forces the X three to come out. And our X two is now in a tougher spot here because they either have to come over to the high post or they have to worry about the one on this backside. Um, so what happens is you can see in the second frame, we have um, the one with the ball, the X two is covered, the two is going to go away. And now we're going to pass to the corner. In a one-two-two, two, we really want to get a corner touch because uh, we need to get these bottom defenders out of the paint. And so what we do with this is when the three gets the ball here, that the four automatically dives. That's one of our rules. When the three gets the ball, they pass that four. And this four right here in this diagram is a little too low. I like to have them catch it more at the midway here at that, uh, out that second line halfway of the paint just so we can now get if the four gets the ball here we can pass to that five because there's no one on this side. So now we're putting the X five in a bad, dis bad spot because we're gonna put them in a disadvantage. Now we're on a one on two where we now can get the four here and it's a quick bounce pass to the five or it's a head fake, like you said, one dribble and we're at the rim or if the five stays down, we're just attacking the rim. Or with this, we can skip pass real quick to the two. Two has an open three. Um, or if the, and then if the X2 does come out, good defender, close out, this five is going to seal up the X5. We have a pass into the as well. Um, and there's other variation. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, one of the things I love about this, I'm looking at the left frame here, and I don't have control of the mouse, but I want to point something out here that I really like. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to say this probably two, at least two more times, I promise, maybe three, is I love that it's a zone offense that you can run against different fronts. I get questions a lot of times from coaches, you know, what's like that one size kind of fits all type of offense that you can use against zones. And that comes up and really like, then there's probably a couple that you could, you could consider, but this is very effective from what I'm seeing against different types of zones. And, you know, just thinking about wrinkles and I know you guys probably <clears throat> have some wrinkles that you use off of it. And, and I'm not asking you to share all your secrets, but, I'm looking at that left frame and I'm saying, you know, that pass goes over to two and one takes three or four steps like they're going to brush cut through and just sticks their foot in the ground. And your five player who's on that block just is going to loop out and set a screen on that two. Yep. And one is going to plant and flare back out and four is going to take two steps like they're going over and they're going to dive down to that right block. And now you've created an opportunity for a quick hit or two. So I know you guys probably do a lot of different things off of this, but like my basketball mind, and there's, and there's only so much you can do, but I'm seeing that. And a couple of frames ago, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm watching it. I'm like, that's just like a nice, oh, they keep cutting through. Oh, they keep cutting through. So defenses start to, oh, here goes one. He's going to cut through again, which is fine. They can know what you're doing. But like you've talked about, there's a lot of different options, a lot of different decisions. So um, that's not a problem, but then he sticks his foot in the ground and flares back out. And all of a sudden now you have a nice ATO play. So I wanted to mention that, and I'm sure you guys have a lot of great stuff and I'm, I'm not looking for you to share all your secrets, but, um, that's just something that came to mind that I'm like, you know what? I, I just want to put that out there. Yeah. I'm going to actually steal that one now that you said <laughs> it, I'm going to draw it up after this and I'm going to put it in my, <laughs> in my play bank. That's a good one. I like that one. That sounds, that sounds good. So, uh, so yeah, this is how we're going to do a one, two, two. And that's our strong entry, like I said before. And you don't always have to go strong. And um, like we talked about last time about does the point guard call this out? Do I call this out? To be honest, it's how we bring the ball to court and what side the ball's on determines if we're running a strong or a weak entry. 
it doesn't need to be called out. It's just whenever we do a slot to slot pass, there has to be an X cut and it has to, have to go that way. So now we have our weak entry against a one, two, two. So here we can see we got the two passing of the one. The one's going to take two dribbles over um, that X one. Now with this, um, when we go a weak side entry here, that X two might come up and guard this one, which will then leave this two more wide open, um, depending on what they're doing and how they do it. Maybe they're trapping, they're a trapping one, two, two zone. This would be, a, this is a really good offense because we just hit that two right here. Um, so then we're gonna dribble over like before, we're gonna swing the ball to the two in the second frame. That X two is gonna slide over, the five is gonna seal. And with this, what we can do is either we can pass the five, they can make a move. Um, the four can cut down and then here's a pass there, or we can skip past to the one out of this um, for a three. And if the four comes out here, if the three comes out, this is awesome because if the three comes out, the four comes out. So now we go to one, three, we dive here, the pass to the four and you have a layup. But like I said, that's gotta be boom, boom, boom. It can't be a pull the ball and wait. Mm -hmm. um, just like here, the two can skip past the ball over to the side. And now our three's coming out. Um, and then the four either has to come out or come up. And we're just putting these guys in, in really bad spots. Um, other things you can do with this too, when I go back to this is you don't have to X in this at all against an odd front. If you leave your one here and um, let's say we uh, just dribble down, the three is going to come out. And we can dribble down and we can come here. And now the three's here. And let's say the X one comes over. Our four can come up. And now we can pass to the four. X two comes up. We swing to the one, especially if it's a, usually when we see a one, two, two, this X one follows the ball and tries to trap that, that side. So if the X one and X three are over here with this two, if they dribble down and this four comes up and we pass, this one flans, we pass. Now the one's out here by himself with the ball. Five can seal. Now this X5 has to side. Am I coming out? So you don't have to X on this as well. You can do the dribble entry, the push entry, the high post entry. High post is kind of tough, but this alignment against the one, two, two, it's kind of crowded. Um, but yeah, you don't have to do an X at all against the one, two, two zone. Coach, I think you alluded to this, but the strong side versus weak side entry, is it really just predicated on like that strong side, the one has the ball, um, on the white, right side of the floor and then the weak side, it's the left side of the floor. Is that what predetermines a strong versus a weak or? Mm -hmm. So I call the strong side wherever the corner is at. Okay. That's our, that's our strong side uh, because that's where we're going to have uh, more guys than them covering. Um, you can think of it like a tight end. If your football mindset guys is that's our tight end, that's our strong side. That's a strong X because we have an easy pass here for this four where we go to the weak side on here and there's no one here. So we call it a weak. I call it the weak entry because there's no simple pass right there. So now just a follow up. So point guard on that right side or, or the two, whoever it is. And that three is in that left side corner. Situationally, will you have that three come to the right side corner you know, and is that predicated on matchups and thinking about ways to exploit defenses or what is it that would cause you to maybe shift that player to the other side of the floor? Is it just in transition, he could end up there and it becomes the strong side and, you know, it's very fluid, the strong versus weak side, or do you typically like, you know what, typically we want our three in that left corner because a lot of times the ball's coming up the right side of the floor and, you know, whatever, so. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, the three doesn't have to be on the left side. Um, it can you can have your three on the right side because my philosophy is the best way to beat a zone is in transition, so they can't get set up. Um, but the three can be on the left. You can put the three on the right. So if you do put the three on the right side, then the five would be opposite. Now, when I teach this to our guys, I make it simple where the three stays put, and until we get it really dialed down, then I tell them. You can now on the X on that pass, you can, if it's a weak entry, you can come over and be that strong side. So like in this case, like you're talking about, um, and that's part of the having a really good decision makers and good players is on this weak entry, that three coming over across would be perfect because 
there's no one here. This five can seal the X five. And now that three has a shot. Now let's say the X five slips out. This five is gonna go and seal this X four. And now we have a post up underneath the rim. Um, it all depends, I guess, on how you wanna teach it. I really start with it really simple where, hey, you're not gonna move right now until we get it dialed in. Because what happens is, is when we sent that three over, they got to tell the five, hey, opposite, go opposite, go opposite, coming through kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of how we, we go about it. Like it too, like uh, the example you just mentioned, the ball could be going to the left side of the floor at the three, but the three could be working back to the right side of the floor. And with that little screen from the five, you could have a skip and a three-pointer off of that too. So there's a lot of options, I feel like, you know, to your point early on, especially keep it simple. And I think just that it's, you know, the very basic level, there's a lot of options. And I think this is going to give zone defenses fits, but there's definitely some ATO and, and opportunities, things you can do out of this. So um, I'm liking it the more I see. Absolutely. So then um, the next part is our one, three, one, um, which has become a pretty popular zone offense, our zone defense. So we're gonna do the exact same thing that we have been doing is, um, the one's gonna start with the ball, we're gonna pass to the two. So in this case, the three is most likely gonna come up, the X one's gonna come over too. So they're probably gonna have two guys on the ball for a bit. So instead of just coming over the free throw line here, we make a longer X cut down to the corner. And now what we've done is the five is gonna seal that runner out, that X4 runner, mm -hmm. and then the one's gonna be here. And now the one can shoot the ball. The five has to stay on the four here because that's typically what one, three, one zones do. And then let's say the runner gets passed, which I like when the runner gets passed. Now, granted, let's say that X4 is six, five, and my one is a five ten point guard. He's not gonna be able to pass over, but we can now get it a post touch into here. Um, so I really like when we do this long X cut where we can get it to that one and we can seal here for a shot. Or if that we get a nice slip here, we can pass and then pass in the post. And then let's say that, let's say they do slip through and the X5 does come down. We can pass to the four real quick. And now we're, we're driving at the rim and we can square up. So then here is when we don't pass it to the one, we're gonna skip, we're gonna have a, we call it a long X, so we're gonna long X. Um, and now the one's down here in the right-hand side, X1, X3 is in their spots. The four, instead of coming straight up, we're gonna now come out a little bit more at a 45. And your two has to be a really good passer because this X2 is probably gonna try to wanna steal this pass here. Um, you can come straight up if you want, but so then the four is gonna now pass, or we're gonna pass the four, and now we're gonna swing it to the three. So now this X4 has come over here, now it's here. So now this X4 now has to come out. This five is just gonna follow across and now we can hit that five. Or if the X5 comes down, we can quick pass to the four and now we can attack that five and hit the five man if not, or we can hit this one in the backside corner. As you can see, we have the three here, five comes over, four comes back down. So that's basically what typically we do against a one, three, one um, is typically we're looking for those uh, to, to get that X4 out of the paint and trying to get the paint open. And the way to do that is you really got to have two guys in the corners um, and a guy at the high post, because if there's no guy at the high post, that X5 can sag down a little bit and start taking away the, the paint. And then, so yeah, that's how, that's all I have for a one, three, one. That's as simple as we keep it for our one, three, one zone offense. Um, and I mean, you can do a high post entry out of this too. Um, it's kind of tough with that X5 there. Um, but the main thing to do is get it to a side. What we'll do too is we'll boomerang it. We'll actually, uh, we'll start with the ball at the two. And if you have the ball at the two, you don't need to X cut anymore because you have a, the guy in the three. So let's say the two has the ball in this situation, passes the one, and now we can pass to the three here. So if you pass to the strong side, there's no X cut. So you, your players have to know which side the your guy's on. Now, if they do X cut, which is fine, if we do pass it over and this two X cuts and we pass the two, now there's the three here, the two here. And now we can pass this. These defenders are just at a really bad spot. They just need to make sure they're 
trying to figure out how they're going to defend two guys in the perimeter, basically overloading the left side of the court. And then the last thing I have is just two, two quick hitters we have. So talking about how that three, um, and my numbers are kind of mixed up here, apologize, but um, this is an overload set that we run. So this is against a two, three zone. This is just an overload set is just the one's gonna pass the three. We're gonna do our long brush cut X cut to the corner. We're gonna pass that one. The one's gonna drag this X three up. And so when, the, when this uh, one gets the ball, this should be a three. The three is gonna slowly, slowly. And then once the ball hits the ground, they're gonna come to this corner. And then we're just gonna loop it back to that three for a quick hitter. And that's kind of uh, uh, kind of some Vance Wahlberg stuff there too, is the, the loop action when you drag that guy up and you hit the loop player. Um, out of this two, when the three comes over and let's say the X3 does, he cheats it, we can attack this X5. And now we can hit the five down here. And then the two is also after they pass it, that two is also gonna come over to this left side. We can now skip it through the paint to the two for a three point shot as well and fork and dive as well. So that's one uh, quick hitter that we have that um, works well. But the big thing here is this one, when they get the ball, they have to take two dribbles and it has to be with a purpose. You can't take one because you take one, there's not enough space. You have a lot of space where the X3 has to come with them. And then our uh, last quick hitter we have is uh, just a crack back one where the one starts the ball, pass the two, the two passes back to the one, the two is gonna cut through or gonna pass to the two. And then um, instead of spacing away, what happens is this X4 is gonna seal this top X2. The two is gonna attack this paint because this X1 is gonna come up on here and now they're gonna attack. And now what's gonna happen is after we seal, the one's gonna crack back here. We can hit the one, we can hit the four, or we can hit that opposite three. So those are just quick hitters that we have um, out of that offense. Well, coach, those are some great quick hitters. A lot of different options out of this. And I'm just thinking now, I'm like, I'm playing against you and you shared your Gonzaga continuity offense. I'm like, man, they'd be tough to play man to man against. Now you've shared your motion offense against the zone. Like, I don't know if I like that. So I guess my last bet would be what we like to do the most, which is put some full court pressure on you. And I'm guessing you have some good uh, attacks against full court pressure. So maybe that'll be next. We've seen the man offense, the zone offense, and then uh, we, we dive into that. But no, seriously, this, this was great, Coach. I feel like you shared a lot of great points for coaches out there and just the concepts and the decision-making aspect and the number of options that you have out of it. And, and I'm going to say, now this is the second time that it is transferable across a one, three, one, a one, two, two, a two, three zone. And I have to think, you know, for your players that you've coached and you've used this with, that has to be a really nice thing for them. Yeah, it's super simple. Um, for them to learn. The biggest thing is trying to get them to remember to X cut because guys will get in the complacency of pass that ball and then they'll just sit there and won't X cut. So you kind of, so like what I do is I try to think of uh, words that start with X. So you could call out, now I'm giving away my secrets again, but you know, if you call X-ray or Xavier or Xylophone or anything like that, just you can have three, four different names, but they all start with X. It's a reminder, kind of those mental tricks is, Okay, I have to X cut here. So that's kind of um, the main part of that. And yeah, it's it's like other offenses where kind of like that Princeton Chicago offense kind of style is when you have that one formation, it's really easy for the guys to learn. And you, you don't have to do a whole lot of planning when it comes to one, three, one or a one, two, two or two, three. Your guys know what they what they need to do because they've been running against. It's the same offense the entire time. Well, Coach, I really appreciate you taking the time to share this with us tonight. And like I said, if I am, uh, you know, in the team coaching again, I would jump right all over this. It would be my zone offense, and I would want to incorporate it with my team. And third time now, it's transferable across different types of zones. And 
I have to keep bringing that up because I think that's such an important part of it. It really keeps it simple for players. There's, there's a little nuances and little differences based on the zone that you're seeing, but essentially you're getting that same cut through and then a lot of the same options. So really appreciate you taking the time to share this with us today. And if coaches would like to reach out to you again, how can they contact you? So if any coaches want to get a hold of this or get a hold of me, my email is austin.hurley at iCloud.com. Make sure you put an E instead of an I. And then my Twitter, if you want to DM me, it's at Coach Hurls on Twitter. Well, Coach, that's awesome. And I, I'm sure some coaches will be reaching out to you to ask some questions about this offense. I know that I definitely would. And I was fortunate to have kind of a front row seat here tonight and be able to ask some of my own questions as you took me through this presentation. So thank you so much. And uh, I don't know, maybe pressure defense or pressure uh, press break in, in the future or maybe another topic down the road as well. Always appreciate what you have to share. Absolutely. Look forward to the next one. All right. Thanks, Coach.